Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Sabansky. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and when we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And today, we got a pretty interesting show for you guys. Uh, but before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Let me go ahead and get into this show here. And this is a show I'm going to deeply enjoy. Obviously, is related to the NBA. And the NBA season is underway. Underway training camp is about to start. We already have players uh, speaking to the media. And I think things are going to ramp up uh, next week and then the weeks after that. And then we're going to have preseason, etc. Now, one of the biggest voices in sports media as it pertains to the NBA is J.J. Redick. J.J. Redick was a former sharpshooter, played in the NBA for over 10 years. Um, he went from team to team, but nevertheless, he was a veteran in the NBA. And throughout his time playing in the league, he was able to cultivate a lot of relationships. So when he started the J.J. Redick podcast, he would he was able to bring on a lot of guests, players that used to play in the past and players, of course, still playing uh, today. And usually when they come on his show, they talk about a range of things. Now, when J.J. Reddick started his show, um, shortly after that, we found out that he was going to be a contributor on ESPN First Take. We produced the show around it and we expressed our excitement for J.J. Reddick, you know, joining the crew. So when he started going on ESPN, um, he was giving, you know, talking about basketball, doing a good job uh, with it. But then over time, I started to notice that J.J. Reddick was would had this slant or uh, a slant and bias towards NBA players. And he had this habit of defending guys even in moments when it was uncalled for. The the most egregious uh, moment was when he brought on uh, Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons, who had turned himself into an absolute nuisance uh, in Philly, then ultimately went to Brooklyn. And a lot of us were sitting back waiting for someone to ask Ben Simmons the, the right, the serious questions. And J.J. Redick basically babied him all throughout the interview. Now, there have been times where he, when he has come to the defense of players, and I think in some of those occasions it was appropriate. But too often, JJ Redick has this habit of where he likes to make excuses for players. And the latest example of this was during the during the FIBA games, when Team USA, who was expected to win the entire tournament, ended up not even meddling in a tournament. Meaning they didn't win the gold, they didn't win the silver, they didn't even win the bronze. Like it was a national embarrassment. It, it was. But then when it came time for J.J. Redick to discuss this, he then started to basically make excuses for why Team, U Team USA didn't play well. And it was something that started to turn off a lot of people. So what we want to do is we want to play some of his original comments about Team USA to give this show some context. And then we'll come back. We'll continue on with the show. Take a listen to that there. This is the FIBA World Cup. Uh, it's been called the FIBA World Championships. I think the last two we've called it the World Cup, 19 and 23. Um, one thing to note, they changed the order or the years in which you hold the FIBA World Cup. So it used to be you play the Olympics, off year, World Cup, off year, Olympics, off year, World Cup. Now in 19, obviously 20 got screwed up because of COVID, but this year, 23 World Cup. 24 Olympics. So for some of the players who not only have a lot of weight to carry during the season and potentially go on deep playoff runs, they also have massive obligations to their shoe sponsors, to their different partners. Yeah. You're asking a lot. You are. You're asking a lot of guys to play back-to-back -back years. Let me start there. I want to get into the roster stuff in a second. So, Steve Carr says, this isn't 90, 1992 anymore. He's correct. The global game is better. The other teams are better. We're also not sending our best players. We're also not sending our best players. So that's important to note. We can get into the gameplay. We can get into why I think this roster could have been a little bit better. We can get into all that. Reality is we're not sending our best players to the World Cup anymore. The continuity is certainly a part of it. Um, I agree with you on that. I think the understanding of FIBA rules, I mean, I'm watching games, for instance, I'm watching games and like, I don't think our guys 
were great at the fact that you can be in the lane for three seconds. There's no D3. Like even Schroeder's, Schroeder's blow, blow by at the end of the game against Germany. Like the help should have been there on Austin Reed. He's got Austin Reed's and ISO. Like what do you think he's going to do? Yeah. The help should have been there quicker. Yeah. There's no, and you watch the other team play defense against us and they're packing the paint. And that's where I think the roster, look, I don't think we had enough shooting. I know Cam Johnson was on the roster. He's an incredible shooter. A bunch of these guys have shot 40% or close to 40% or better than 40% in their careers, uh, not in their careers, but in certain years in their careers. So it's not to say we don't have guys that can shoot the ball. And I, and like from the games, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't watch the New Zealand game. I watched pretty much every other game. From from the games, like I'm proud of our group. I don't think it was an effort issue. Um, I, I I go back to some roster limitations, and I go back to not quite grasping FIBA basketball because yeah. it is very different than the NBA. Which brings me to my next thing that I want to say. I saw a lot of <laughs> weird discourse on Twitter bashing our guys. Right, started with Brandon Ingram, who I've already talked about. Coach Case said this about, uh, I can't remember who he was talking to specifically about, but he said this. When these guys play for their national team, they turn into Michael Jordan. You think about uh, Luis Scola. Very good NBA player. Incredible for Argentina. Evan Fournier. Very good NBA player for a number of years. Last World Cup, he was Michael Jordan. At the Olympics, he was Michael Jordan for France. Patty's a little bit older. He c- killed, us killed us multiple times in the past. And so this brings me to why the knocking of our players is so ludicrous. Think about the human nature of this. You play a role on the Knicks. You play a role on the Pacers. You play a role on the Wolves. You play a role on the Nets. Whatever that role is, it's a role where you get to star. You get the ball in your hands, you get plays called for, you get to operate the offense. We're asking you to sacrifice. Let's flip that. You're the backup point guard. You're our spot-up shooter. You're a guy that's coming off catch and shoot. Your only thing you're going to do is play two-man game with Julius Randle. Now, you're on the national team. We're running every play for you. Who do you think's more excited about their role? What is the human nature of that? Who do you think is yeah. more excited? The I mean, guys that are getting a bigger role or the guys that are getting a lesser role? So you heard what J.J. Redick had to say there. So what happened? Uh, recently, he had on a guest, Cam Johnson, uh, who used to be a member of the Phoenix Suns. Very great young player, great shooter, versatile player. And he was also a member of that Team USA roster alongside uh, um, Anthony, uh, what is it, Anthony Edwards, um, Austin Reeves, Jaron Jackson Jr., and so many other young guys, right? But he was a part of that squad uh, that lost the tournament. So what happened? They start talking about what happened. And to my surprise, Cam Gen- uh, Cam Johnson, as J.J. Redick wanted to get it into his old, his, his old defense case, Cam Johnson goes, no, 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 no. There is no reason. There was, there is no excuse for us going out there and getting embarrassed the way that we did to the point where we didn't even win a single medal in the tournament for us to be sitting up here making excuses. So what we want to do is we want to play exactly the moment Cam uh, Cam Johnson told JJ Redick to his face that, listen, no, there are no excuses. And excuse making is the problem that we're having right now. So take a listen to what Cam Johnson had to say here to JJ Redick, and then we'll come back and, and, and give you guys our closing thoughts. Take a listen to that. I don't want to say I defended you guys and the result, but I I tried on the podcast to, I think, provide a little bit of context. And whether you want to call it an excuse or not, I said, look, you know, here's the roster. Here are some players that could have been on the team. You look across the world and not everybody showed up, but a lot of the best players for their country showed up. FIBA is a different thing, right? Uh, I think what's interesting is taking a step back in your role versus what a lot of guys who go play for their national team, they get to take a step up in terms of their role. And that's an adjustment um, on the, on, on those two things. I don't want to get into the roster cause I don't really give a shit about that, but like on those two things, the FIBA rules and how that game is played. And also just what I'm talking about in terms of roles and kind of figuring it, that out in three or four weeks 
just the the difficulty and the experience of trying to do that and win at the highest level. Yeah. Uh, firstly, there there's no excuse for not winning. Right? I, I didn't say there's it wasn't. None. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm not gonna def- like I, yeah. it. It hurts us individually, collectively, as much as more than anybody. You know, it's disappointing. You, we put you know you put a lot of time into those things and you want the outcome that you want. You don't get it. It's very frustrating. <sighs> FIBA is a different game. FIBA is just a it's a different game and like you see guys playing for their for their national teams like you said they're 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 you can't treat them like the the players there on the NBA you just can't you know and just the flow of the game the way it's played the way it's officiated uh, minor rule changes it's it's different and there's different focuses you know when you're playing a team. everybody in the NBA sort of plays a very similar style of basketball like there has been a style of basketball that analytically or you know success wise has dictated how other teams pretty, you know, pretty much your, league. pretty much your whole career and it's That's a copycat everybody's league everybody's kind of played it's a copy, it's a way. copycat yeah, yeah. league eventually 100%. everything's going to catch up and, and and evolve but fiba you know the physicality is different the way they play is different and they don't really care you know how the game's played in the nba they're going to play they're going to play their way so it was a super interesting experience to see that and you know it opened our eyes quickly as we're playing against slovenia and spain in those exhibition games that they're like those teams run offenses very efficiently. Like you can tell they've been playing together for a long time. So it's like, okay, this is what, this is what we're in store for. Also they crash the glass, like, you know, nobody's business and, and, and they're just efficient. Like they're, they're, they're accountable. They play hard. They play for each other. Um, so I, on a basketball, like on just a pure basketball side of things, like it's beautiful to watch, right? Like, you know, it's basketball globally, you know, everybody's speaking different languages. Everybody looks completely different. And everybody's able to kind of play their own style of basketball. Um, so it, I do think, obviously, our even the group, you know, people say we didn't have this, we didn't have that, we should have sent this. You guys had a bunch of awesome NBA players. We so had really be, good I, NBA I, players. I, 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 like, like, there's no excuse yeah, yeah, not yeah. to win. Um, yeah. But just the nature, it's basketball, the nature of the game. Like, And so everybody's like, well, how did Team USA give up this many points? I'm like, because they're defending four or five actions on a possession I'm sorry. Like I'm not this again. This is not an excuse. Not an excuse. It is. It's it, you have a month, and it's a learning curve. And as NBA players, how many teams play like that? Maybe one. Right. Maybe, Maybe. Golden State. Maybe. Right. Maybe. It's a different. It's a different thing. So. It, it, yeah, and that's that's a huge part of it, and and we understood that. Everybody understands going to FIBA. Like, we have six weeks to become a team, and that you know is not. We weren't blind to that. But everybody's trying to figure out their role. Everybody's trying to figure out where they where they lie in the rotation. The coaches are trying to figure it out. You know, it's, it's, there's stuff to it, it that makes it, you know, more difficult than it may seem on the outside. But, man, at the end of the day, I, I don't, like, I don't feel like we should have lost. You know, we lost by two points, and, you know, we lost by Lithuan- to Lithuania by five points. You know, it's Canada went to overtime. These are not, like, runaway games. These are games where uh, Germany against Germany, Obst, their three-point shooter, had nine foul shots off of threes. Yeah. You know? Like, just three little plays. subtleties of the game. Three plays. You know what I mean? Little yeah. subtleties of the game. Minor lapses in what we're trying to accomplish, um, and they scored 113 points in a 40-minute game, or whatever it was, 110-plus points in a 40-minute game. And credit to those teams for being able to take advantage of those things. But... You know, it's it, it is eye opening to the game of basketball because you get so conditioned. Eighty two games of NBA basketball. You're watching film every single day. You're watching games every single day. We consume hundreds of games, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of games of NBA basketball yearly. That our brains get so conditioned <laughs> to just thinking that's how we play. You know, that's yeah. just oh everybody. You know, everybody plays like that. <laughs> yeah. So you heard what he had to say. Now, Cam Johnson is the first player I've heard that's currently playing in this NBA uh, that I've heard discuss this issue. If you paid close attention to what he was saying, he was speaking about the lack of versatility, not of that roster, because the roster had its limitations, especially with size and rebounding. But he was talking about the inability to adjust to a global game. And as I was listening to him, I began to understand that the NBA and other leagues are exactly just that thing. 
they are two separate leagues with two different styles of play. And it seems to me that this modern era of player, not excluding the fact that there needs to be time for a team to gel, understand the system abroad, not excluding that fact, but it seems like they have a harder time adjusting to the global game. And to me, that speaks volumes because the United States historically is known for being the country that dominates in international competition and when we play NBA and when we play basketball because they have the best players in the world. The other thing I'm noticing is that now we're making excuses for mediocrity. Not even mediocrity because mediocrity means you're somewhere in the middle. We're making excuses for being lousy at a particular sport. Medio mediocre would have been if they won the bronze. In this particular instance, they didn't even win a medal. And now for us to sit back here and say, oh, well, it's no big deal. To that I say, so why did you even go? Why did we even bother participating in the event? Why even bother? If you don't really care what the results are going to be, why go? To me, that line of thinking is a cop-out. And if you listen to that conversation, it sounded like J.J. Redick was trying to look for ways to make excuses. Now, he may say, oh, well, I'm not making excuses. What I'm doing is giving context. But at the very end, bro, it's an excuse because they lost. Now, what we're trying to do is explain the reasons why they lost. It doesn't change the fact that they lost. And they had no business losing. And they certainly didn't have any business not even get, getting a single medal. Not even a single medal. And to me, I have to ask the pertinent question that some people are thinking in the back. J.J. Reddick is infamous for his plumbers and firemen comment. And now I'm beginning to wonder, do we have a lot of plumbers and firemen running around the league today? I got to ask. I'm sorry. I got I to gotta, I gotta know. I got to know. Because all we've been hearing is that the, the, this current crop of players are the are, are the most athletic, which cannot be proven. It's just people just talking. How do you prove that? How do we prove that these guys are more athletic? How are we doing that? No, I'm, I mean, practically. Okay, we line up all the NBA players and then we go out into an arena. How do we prove it? What do we, how do we, are we testing who can run back up and down a court, uh, run a 30 meter dash or a hundred yard dash as fast? What do we, are we, are we doing a vertical leap test? How do we, people are just talking. Players are as athletic as they've always been. And some fools are running around thinking that this is evolution without realizing that there are two forms of evolution. There's macro evolution and there's micro evolution. There are two different forms. Macro is turning a bottle into a remote. Micro is maybe the shape of this bottle changing over time due to things that happen, maybe heat and all of those things. People are just talking these days. So to me, I'm beginning to wonder, do we have a lot of firemen in the NBA? And oh, by the way, it's also making me begin to, to remember some of the things that Kobe Bryant used to say. Because if you listen to Kobe Bryant and these guys talk basketball, Kobe talk basketball, you wouldn't even waste a second of your time listening to JJ Redick talk basketball. You wouldn't even waste a second. You would not even waste a second of your time. Kobe was a basketball savant, period. And he was noticing some of the issues with the direction and the trends that he was seeing in the NBA, but not just at the NBA, also at the youth level, specifically the AAU circuit. And it's a shame because the league seems to be kind of one-dimensional now, and Cam Johnson said it. So I thought that was a fantastic conversation. So what I want to know from you guys is, number one, what do you think about what Cam Johnson had to say about, uh, I could say to JJ Redick, number two, how do you think the USA remedies the situation uh, moving forward to be able to adapt to a global game? Whatever you guys think, leave your thoughts in the comments and we catch you on the next show. Peace.